for those that don't know who I'm talking to here, uh, this is Chris Lutz. Uh, Chris, you, you've probably seen him at the, the home shows selling the knife sharpener at suction cups down the counter. Uh, you draw your knife through it once, twice, three times, and your knife is razor sharp. Now, Chris, I know your pitch is a little longer than that, but we'll talk about that on another day, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've ever been on a, have you ever been on a uh, very, very successful uh, talk show before? Can't say I have, Larry. Okay, I'm, well, I'm very excited. Chris, if you ever are, would you please let us know? Because <laughs> we, we would love to watch that. Okay? Yeah, I will let you know. Okay, so let me explain how my show works. I'm going to ask a series of questions. I'm the show host. Uh, my questions are going to be not that interesting, but your answers, this is where we count on the guests, they're going to be super interesting, okay? If uh, if you answer correctly, uh, we will just move to the next question. If you answer incorrectly, uh, you're going to hear this. Wait a second. Yeah, that will mean you answered incorrectly, and the interview is comes to a complete uh, halt, and we don't ever okay. hear this show. I know it's a little, little, <laughs> pressure, little, little pressure, but you've worked with me before, so I think you're used to uh, you're used to put under pressure, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that location at the C and E <laughs> a little later on in the show. <laughs> Good, glad. I want to revisit that. Oh yeah, definitely yes. So, Chris, um, how long have you worked with uh, me for? Uh, this would be my ninth year. Nine years. Amazing. Nine years. And uh, I got to ask you, because you actually came in for an interview into my office. Can I ask how you found uh, to come to me? Yeah, you know what? Uh, funny enough, it was actually by accident. Uh, my or my aunt, Kippy Spurgeon, actually referred me to Mark I Coleman. For you to say you were you meant to go to the next door with a glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. No, actually, uh, she referred me to Mark Coleman because my cousin at one point did the exhibition for Mark uh, during the hype of the Sham Wow and uh, made himself a lot of money in 18 days. However, Mark wasn't hiring that year. And it was July, so you were doing your uh, your big ramp up for the exhibition. And uh, sure enough, she got me an interview with you. I went in in my uh, my dress shirt and dress pants, and uh, we just sort of hit it off. And uh, you offered me the job at the exhibition. You know, I remember I remember that meeting very well, and uh, and and I remember uh, getting your full name after the at the end of the uh, interview. And when you said Chris Lutz. Uh, if you remember, I automatically went, are you any relation to Gary Lutz, who turned out to be your dad? And of course, your dad and I, uh, you know, n have known each other uh, for many, many years. Well, you know, frequently I like to get a job on my own merits. Um, you know, bringing up Gary Lutz can sometimes be a good thing or a bad thing. So, uh, <laughs> you know what, just go into it on my own and, and see what sort of happens. That's right. Now, what was your first show with me? Uh, my first show with you would have been the exhibition in 2012. And that was with what product? Uh, I was selling the Boombox Vibration Speaker. Oh. And what a great first product to sell. Um, it got me hooked into the business right away. Yeah, that was uh, that was certainly a fun. For people that don't uh, remember that product, it was explain what that product was, Chris. Yeah, essentially what it was is it was a, a little piece of plastic that you would put on any object and it would turn that item into a speaker. Uh, so the claim to fame what for us was obviously a, a styrofoam cooler, uh, and the music used to just explode through this product. In fact, the first time I actually played with that product was uh, at a Secret Santa, where somebody gave away one of your products, which was the, the vibration speaker, and it went over so well. So when I found out that I was selling this product at the exhibition, uh, needless to say, I was very, very excited. Yes, and I remember I, I teamed you up with another new guy, um, Brian, who, of course, yes. is no longer with us. Uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, uh, you came in and Brian came in, you know, same time and same show, same same product. And um, Brian lasted one show while you lasted nine years. And it just goes to show you that, I mean, we... We, we sort of create our own luck because one person may be successful under the exact same circumstances as another. But, um, you know, Brian's not one of my Facebook friends, so I don't <laughs> mind telling you, you know, that guy would fuck up a wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, he wasn't a great partner, but uh, no, he, we moved on from that. 
Yeah, and I apologize for that. But again, you know, you, that's what the filter is all about. I'm just, it's unfortunate we had to filter him with for 18 days. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a long show to get stuck with a crappy partner. But uh, you know what? What doesn't kill you makes it stronger. That's, that's for sure. what they say. Uh, what would be your, over the years, Chris, you've worked lots of products. Uh, uh, the one that most people know you by, of course, is the sharpener, one of my favorites. But what is one of your favorite products? Uh, again, I had a lot of fun with the vibration speaker. Um, the Exos, believe it or not, was one of my, my favorite products. Yes. Um, just the attention we were getting, it was the right time. It was all over TV. We used to have kids coming up to the booth saying, that's the hose on TV, the one that grows. Yes. And, uh, you know, having tips of 100 to 200 people, um, you know, it gets your heart going and, oh, yes. and nothing makes you feel better. It, it really was the best product at the time it really was i mean speaking of which the the you know the hose that grows what about when the the hose that blows <laughs> well i remember that too so we walked in one morning and uh our neighbor made a comment to us saying i hope you don't mind we made a youtube video of you called the hose that explodes and uh we thought that our careers were over because they sat there for 10 days watching us collect a lot of money Yes. And they saw these hoses exploding every two hours. <laughs> so uh, they thought it would be funny. And we did too. Um, but yeah, no, it, uh, it, that product had its challenges. That's for sure. Oh, it certainly did. But you know, funny enough, Chris, and um, I, I, I'm still using uh, an X-hose. And here it is. I mean, I, we don't water our lawn every night. We don't water our lawn at all. But we're still using an X-hose. And uh, I remember when a tree fell in slow motion on our house, uh, we, we had someone come in and he wanted to, he fixed the gutters and stuff and he wanted to uh, check the gutter to make sure that the water was, was pouring down the spout. And he says, do, do, you, do you have a hose? And I, and I went, yes. <laughs> and I remember giving it to him and he went up the la and he said, oh my God, I've seen these things on TV. Yeah. And, and, and I remember turning it on going, oh, please don't explode while this guy's on a ladder. <laughs> Do you remember when we were at a show in Coburg, uh, the the waterfront festival or whatever it was, and uh, we we tried we tried the axos for one last show. We said, you know what, we've got some inventory. Let's see what happens. We'll blow them out at a super low price. Gotcha. And and somebody said to me, you know, I heard these explode. And I said, you know, just be careful with them because um, it's like anything. You know, if if you're hard on it, it's not going to last. And he said, you know what, I'm pretty good. I'll I'll give it a shot. And uh, he came back the next day with a bag full of wet hoses and he walked up to the booth and I thought he was going to punch me in the face. Yes. And before he could say anything, I had $20 in my hand and just stuck it out. He gave me the bag of hoses. He took the $20 and he said, thank you very much and yeah. walked away. You know, I think it's like an air pump. If you turned your hose on full blast right away, it, it created a bubble and burst. So 100%. we learned that later. I mean, how to tell people to turn them on because it really was, if you did it on gently and let it grow gently, I think the results, you know, were a lot Absolutely. long lasting, uh, but that was, uh, that was a great product. Uh, I want to talk about another thing. One day you, uh, it was at the national home show. Uh, you got to work early cause that's what you do. And you, uh, you caught a thief rummaging through the knife booth. <laughs> tell us that story. Oh boy. <clears throat> so it was the uh, second Saturday of Canada Blooms. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a 10 day show that takes place in Toronto. And uh, I normally show up about an hour and a half early and uh, I show up and I see somebody behind the booth. So I lean up against the wall and just sort of watch them for a couple seconds just to sort of see what's going on. And uh, eventually I just got mad and walked up to him. So I walk up to him and at this point he's behind my booth going underneath tarps, looking at inventory. And I said, uh, what's going on? And he said, uh, you know, I saw your demonstration yesterday and I just wanted to get some more information on the knives. And I said, and this is your form of information gathering. And he sort of looked at me blankly. And at that point uh, he said, you know what? I'll come back later in the day. I really want to buy a knife set. And I said, okay, great. And at this point I'm just rattled. I, I don't understand why somebody is behind my booth. Yeah. And I said to him, you know, before I can let you go, I need to see inside that bag. He's carrying this massive black bag. He undoes one of the zippers, and sure enough, there's nothing in it. So he walks away, 
and I'm still not content exactly with what's going on. So I start to follow him and I see uh, one of our buddies at uh, GS, the, the gentleman that look after the building. And I asked him if he could help me go and look in this gentleman's bag. And he said, I can't do that. And I said, do me a favor, go get security. I said, we're heading in that direction. So I started following the thief and he's zigzagging in between aisles. And at this point, I was like, okay, this guy's trying to get away from me. He's up to no good. So he keeps zigzagging and eventually I passed Bobby Paquette. And I said to Bobby, please go get uh, security. We're heading in that direction. And I remember calling you on the phone and yes. you were down in the, uh, the parking lot. So reception wasn't great. Yeah. And I just kind of told you the story and you said, just keep following, keep following him. So eventually I follow him all the way over to Hall A. And Hall A from where my booth was is quite a ways. And I see him go in the back of this booth. I won't mention the, the company name or anything like that. And when I go into the back, he's unloading knives into this, this cardboard box. So he stole a bunch of knives from us. So at this point, I follow him in the back and I push him up against the wall and I start gathering up all the knives. And at this point, I am calling him every name in the book. I am going off. Yes. He, he then drops his wallet on the ground and I grab his wallet. He didn't know that I grabbed his wallet, but I guess he was thinking if security comes, this way he won't have ID. So he tries to leave through Hall A doors. And again, I grab him and throw him up against the wall. And I am again calling him every name in the book. And that's when John Leroy came. Yes. So John Leroy says to me, young man, settle down. I'll take care of this. Yes. And he asked the thief for his wallet. And he says, I must have forgot it in my car. And I pull it out of my pocket. And I said, here it is, John. I said, and I continued to call him every name in the book. And John says, Chris, settle down. Yes. So at this point, I'm not allowed to say anything. No. And uh, Brian from GS was kind enough to drive me back to my booth with all the, the merchandise, which again, it was about $500 worth retail. Yes, yeah. And I remember we saw you on the way back to the booth and you put your hands up in the air and you're like, yes, yes. yes. And uh, no, it was, a, it was a very entertaining morning. And uh, my, my favorite part about the story, though, was Henry Greenwood was my partner at that show who yes. flies in from uh, Alberta or BC. And the first weekend of Cal or a can of blooms, everybody comes by and says, oh, Henry, how are you? And they give him a hug and all the attention's on him. Right. And the ne next weekend, everybody's coming by saying, Chris, tell me the story. I got to yes. hear the story. Yeah, yeah. Henry's sitting there leaning on the booth like he does. And he says to me, you know, I liked it a lot better the first weekend when everybody was coming by to say hi to me. That's funny. But, yeah, uh, that, that's funny. That. And that uh, that win, uh, that that bust you got, uh, that that won you a one hundred dollar uh, bill from me. <laughs> I remember taking the picture of it, and uh, that was a great day. Well, and it was just a great day because it's the last Saturday at Can of Blooms, and that's always going to be a good day. So uh, I know it was that a little extra bonus, and thank uh, you very much for that. <laughs> nine years later no how that was what five years ago or yeah probably about uh five four years ago something like that that was uh, that was an exciting morning and i just remember the the adrenaline at that time of the day is i mean usually i mean it's usually life is pretty tame at you know nine o'clock in the morning but uh <laughs> I, I was shaking until like 11 o'clock i was just like woo <laughs> so, no it was a good way to start the day now, uh, Chris, you've, you've been running two jobs uh, for a few years now. Uh, one company you're working for is from, is that correct? And I correct. remember when you took on this other company and I and uh, you started doing very well with them and you you helped me out still when you could at the shows. And I, I just remember saying to you, because uh, it was F-R-O-M-M, -M, right? From? Correct. And I yeah. just remember saying to you, Chris, all I ask, if anybody ever asks, how do you make all your money? You just say from do dead, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I do. I use that one frequently. The uh, uh, are you still with From, of course? And tell us quickly what From does. Uh, from is a manufacturer of strapping, strapping tools, and automated uh, packaging systems. Uh, so to make that easy, strapping is used for bundling things. So if you ever see a bunch of wood piled up with that green strap around it. Uh, that strapping, or if you buy a TV and it's got that white or clear strapping around the sides, that is strapping. So it's, it's a glamorous lifestyle, but uh, <laughs> you know what? It's, uh, it's done very well for me, and uh, you know what? I enjoy it very much. 
Well, you know what? It's uh, it's the old uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get. You you purchased the house just before uh, COVID hit Canada. Is that correct? I did, and uh, you know, couldn't have been a better time for me. It was it was right before the housing market exploded, of course. Um, but to have to do COVID in my mother's basement would have been very very tough. So yeah. uh, no, it it was the right time. That's for sure. Well, that's very good. So. Um, you know, when the uh, when the shows start up again, I know you're very, very busy now with uh, with from but you and I, we we speak uh, pretty well every day. And uh, I mean, I'm always checking up on you at 430. And sometimes we talk only for a minute or two. But you are one person that, you know, we've always we've kept in touch over uh, this last 15 months just to make sure both of us are on track. Well, and you know what? I think it's been good for both of us. Uh, we've we've both had our ups and downs, and you know, just having another person to talk to uh, is always beneficial. And uh, I know I've said it to you before, but I really do consider to, or consider you to be a life coach. So, uh, you know what? I enjoy our conversations every day. Well, likewise. And Chris, I want to thank you for uh, agreeing to be on the show today. And uh, and the next time I see you. Uh, I'm going to give you a Show Talk coffee mug. I don't do that with all my guests, but because of our history, I want you to have one of these. And uh, and we will. Uh, and I will see you again soon. And I'll make uh, I'll make my way up to the house, and we can do a barbecue. Hey, thanks, dude. That would be great. Okay, Chris. Thanks a lot, and say goodbye to everybody. Take care, guys. Thanks again. Take care. All the best.